Now, the Mole Mystery Theater. Presented by M O L L E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Welcoming you to the Mole Mystery Theater, the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Tonight's mystery, entitled Death Wears a Mask, was written by Robert Mitchell and Gene Levitt and stars Bill Quinn. It's the story of Joseph Talbot, who escapes from prison and tries to claim the woman he loves. To do so, he finds himself forced to assume two aliases. One is a common enough name, John Mason, but the other is... Humpty Dumpty. And his short career follows that of the Mother Goose character rather closely as he finds that death wears a mask. Well, say, Mr. Barnes, you sure have me curious about this Humpty Dumpty character. I can hardly wait. But first, there's one thing I just can't help saying. It's this. Man, if shaving tough whiskers or a tender skin has you hollering for help, then call for Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Yes, sir, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Try it. Mole. And now for tonight's Mole mystery, Death Wears a Mask. saw that mask, that black mask, that's when my insides turned to ice water. I clamped a rigid grip on my courage up to then, held onto my poise and my feelings until they unfolded that black mask. Then I got scared, really scared. That's when the whole awful business boiled through my mind like a churning torrent, the torrent of grinning, gaudy faces that laughed and shrieked at me, mocked me. Garish, distorted faces that bobbed and waggled as the fantastic punching figures reached out, clawing for me. The evil Duke of Gloucester, Captain Kidd, Cleopatra, George Washington, Napoleon, Lucifer, the Black Prince, all of them and more cavorting in a mad circle around me, giggling and pausing and blasting for me. And it was Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc more beautiful than I'd remembered. A mask gone, staring up the sky as the silent ripples dancing over a face slowly darkened. In the instant that was left, my mind plunged back through these memories to the point where it all started. Back to the night, I walked in the shadows of a flagstone path and stopped a moment to look at the name on the door before I pressed the bell. Joseph. Joseph! Surprise, Brother John. Come inside, quick. Is that wise? Perhaps your cook or your wife. Come alone. Come in before someone sees you. Well, 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 well. Looks as if you've done pretty well for yourself in the last four years. New city, new business, even a new name. Mason now. <laughs> Talbot was a little carnage, eh, John? Never mind all that. How did you get out? What do you mean, coming here? Take it easy, John. One thing at a time. I broke out. I shot a guard. Joseph. He may have died. I don't know. I had a tough time last night, a tougher time today. Getting down here and finding you wasn't easy. Do the police... No. They think I went east. I'm okay for a while. Now, see here, Joseph. I can't afford to... Besides, John. Where else would I come for help? Except to my big brother. Well, of course I want to help you, but you must realize... Why do I pour a drink? Oh, help yourself. It's been four years since I've tasted whiskey. Uh, you have to be hungry to know what it's like to really relax. Now, a little music on the radio. 
Joseph, you've got to get out of here. Some friends of mine will arrive in a few minutes. I, I'm expected to go out with them to the annual masquerade ball. That's all. That's too bad. I hope for a chance to talk to you. Oh, by the way, where's Claire? She's gone ahead to the ball. She was on the committee. Oh? Well, since I'm a traveling man, I'll need cash and some clothes. It might be a long trip, so make it heavy on the cash. Now, wait a minute. Go on, get the money, John. Bring it all. Well, I'll bring what there is in the safe upstairs. My clothes will be a little large for you. You'd better take sports stuff. Wait here a minute, Joseph. I won't be long. You'd better not be. Well, so far, so good. The whiskey was warm inside me, and the music was low and sweet. I dropped my head back into the soft, smooth cushion of the chair and closed my eyes. The gentle music flowed from the radio and smoothed me. Almost subconsciously, I became aware of the clicking that had intruded into the melody. Absently, I remembered it was like... like a telephone being dialed. The extension of stairs. I sprang out of the chair and dashed across the room. The downstairs telephone sat on a small table in the hall. Mr. Sergeant, never mind who this is. I just thought the police ought to know that Joseph Talbot, the escaped convict, is the tower right now in the Oak Ridge Terrace District. That louse. That dirty louse. Joseph, you startled me. You're jumpy, John. Well, could you blame me with you in the house? It's 1,200. That's all there is. Okay. I got restless downstairs. You were taking so long. I had trouble with the combination. Uh-huh. Where are the clothes? Hey, what the devil is this stuff? This egg business and these striped pants. Uh, that's my costume for the night. The egg fits over your head. I told you, it's a costume ball masquerade. Oh? <laughs> it's a little flashy for me. Here, I'll, uh, I'll take that suit, some shirt. A couple of ties, some socks. All right, put them in this bag. Take anything you want, only hurry up and get out of here. My friend... Yes, is... yes, I know. They'll be here any minute. Quit worrying. You have more important things to do. What do you mean? John, did you ever stop to figure how long four years are? A man can figure a lot of angles in four years. I've been thinking all that time how helpful you've been, John. Well, I, I've always tried to do what I could. And you've done so much, John. Like when Claire was my wife, and we were flat broke. You took, took us in to live at your house, remember? Well, I... You found me a job, that bookkeeping job, remember? To help me learn it, taught me the tricks. We had a nice little penny-ante deal going. And all of a sudden, I got arrested and tried for grand larceny, remember that? Now, look, Joseph. But I got the axe. Ten years, they said. But even then, you helped me. You promised to look after Claire for me, to take care of her. And you did. You married her. Oh, no. Now, wait a minute, Joseph. Claire and I, we... Well, I fell in love with her, and you were gone. It, it wasn't fair for her to wait. You can't expect... Maybe you're right. Maybe we're square. Joseph, you know I'll do anything I can. Write to me any time. I'll send you more money, Joseph. After I leave, you won't call the cops and tip them off, John. Of course not, Joseph. Good heavens, you're my own. Wait a minute. That was a statement, not a question. But I... Joseph. No... <laughs> I didn't realize how much I hated John until I found myself resenting the neatness of the little round hole in his forehead. But now I had to move fast. I snapped the suitcase shut. John's friends. They were at the door. I heard the door open. <laughs> covered your whole head. Sure, why not? It was perfect. Pretend to be John. Our voices were not like. Hi, you two. Sorry I'm a little behind schedule. Mix yourself a drink. Okay, but take the leg. We're late already. It worked. Now to get into this rig. I'd go to that dance in John's outfit and see Claire now tonight. Maybe she'd come with me. We could leave the country together. The costume was big and baggy. 
I slipped it on over my clothes, except for the long, pointed shoes and the headpiece, the egg with a painted, grinning face. I looked at myself in the mirror. It was funny. Really funny. All I had to remember now was to play the part. Play John out for a good time. Okay. I'm all ready. Oh, I love Bill. <laughs> oh, it's priceless. It's positively priceless. John Mason, you're a scream. <laughs> okay, Dumpty. John, you're marvelous. Bill, look at that head. I've never seen anything so funny. Oh, I'm proud of you, John. Well, you, you look pretty good yourself. Clear path, all right? Mm-hmm. And cats and kid, no mistaking you, you old pirate. <laughs> Running true to type, aren't you? Okay, I get it. You're going to be nasty. <laughs> hey, your voice sounds different. You sound like you have a mouthful of mush with that thing over your noggin. Oh, we're <laughs> going to have a swell time tonight. Come on. Humpty Dumpty. How are you doing, John? Oh, fine, fine. Another bump and you can serve me with ham. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, John, what's Claire wearing? What? That's a secret. Oh, get him playing according to rules. Oh, that's all right. It spoils all the fun, as you know. Hey, what's this over here? Huh? What? Oh, it looks like a barricade of some kind. Oh. And the police. Huh? A roadblock. The police. Well, Mr. Fan, from where Joseph Talbot sits, it looks as though Humpty Dumpty is set for a fall. Now, we shall see in just a moment when we bring you Act Two of tonight's Molly Mystery. Meantime, here's Dan Seymour with a message for a certain group of our men listeners. Well, say, men, for a long time now, we've been having a lot of fun reminding you about Mole, even singing a little song about it. Well, we hope you've had some fun out of it, too, especially learning about those smooth, slick Mole shades. And to those of you who just never got around to trying it, all we say is, next time, ask for Mole. You know, many of us miss out on a lot of good things by not trying them. Try Mole. The heavier brushless shaving cream. Notice what close, comfortable shaves you get, no matter how tough your whiskers or how tender your skin. Yes, as plenty of men have discovered, because Mole is a heavier cream, it not only softens your whiskers, it stands them up straight and lets your razor shave them off faster, closer, easier, and painlessly. So how about it? Tomorrow, get a tube of Mole. The heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. And now this is Jeffrey Barnes returning you to Act Two of Death Wears a Mask. convict of this neighborhood. Killed a guard at the prison last night, armed and dangerous, protecting everybody that looks suspicious. That's us, Tim. Captain Kidd here is wanted for piracy. I'm wanted by Mark Anthony. I guess Humpty Dumpty Mason in the back is the only innocent aboard. Oh, let's see about that. Hey, that sure is some get-up, Mr. Mason. Uh, sure you're not a bad egg? Oh, I'm pretty bad, Tim. You might say that the yoke is on you for letting it go. <laughs> oh, brother, how good can you be? Okay, folks, on your way. Have a good time. What was she wearing? She could be anybody from old Mother Hubbard to Tondaleo. They were all here. As I moved through the crowd, I made quite a hit in John's costume. Mark! There's Humpty Dumpty! Hello, Humpty Dumpty! I had no idea where to start looking. Claire would recognize this Humpty Dumpty rig. Maybe she'd spot me. Once, 
a girl alone walked up to me, and I stopped. Hello. Oh, you look marvelous. My, what a face. Claire? No, wrong number, mister. I'm Madame Lafarge. Can't you tell? These confounded masks. I moved toward the back of the room, and then I noticed Joan of Arc standing alone in the corner. She was waving. I looked around, but no one seemed to be paying any attention. She waved again, so I walked toward her. Hello, there. <laughs> Wonderful. Your costume is the best in the place. You really think so? Yes, I told you it would be. Oh, did uh, Marilyn and Bill pick you up on time? Oh, sure, sure. Plenty of time. Oh, well, they thought they might be late. Oh, we had an awful mess here. Never again will I serve on a dance committee. Would you like a drink, John? Huh? What'd you say? What's the matter with you, darling? Oh, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I was thinking. Is something wrong? Wrong? Well, no, no, there's nothing wrong. Why? You sound sort of worried. Not like yourself. Oh, you're, you're imagining. If you were talking to an omelet, you wouldn't sound the same either. <laughs> Shall we have a drink? I'd much rather dance with you, Claire. All right, darling. When I took her in my arms, everything else faded away. Crowd, the color, the noise. Leaving just Claire and the music. I'd waited so long for this. I wanted to forget everything else. I love dancing with you, John. Does it stop there? Does what stop? Your love. Oh, you silly. Oh, John, before I forget, here are the car keys. I've almost lost them a dozen times. I guess Joan of Arc had no use for pockets. The keys to the car... Oh, okay, sure, sure. I've kept them looped over the handle of my poignard all evening, but... Handle of your what? The dagger. The real 15th century poignard I just found out. Oh, is that so? Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, uh, where did you park? Way down at the end of the center lane. I backed him so we can get out faster. Well, that's fine. Fine, darling. I'll, uh, I'll keep the keys. But, uh, we were talking of love, Claire. Remember? Mm-hmm. Nice subject. Just where does your love stop? It's not with them. Why, sir, how can you ask? I really want to know. I mean it. Something's come up, and I must know for sure about you, Claire. Do you love me? John, it's a joke. I've never been more serious in my life. Do you love me? John, I don't know what to make of this. Ah, here you are, you lovely people. Hello. And John Mason, you're a perfect Humpty Dumpty, even to the gestures. Everyone says so. And Claire, my dear, you're such a fascinating Joan of Arc. Sarah Sims, of course, I should have it is the Keystone Cup, isn't it? That's so appropriate. Oh, I thought so. It's a giveaway, of course. Everyone recognized him. <laughs> oh, well, John, people will probably suspect a scandal when Mother Goose dances with Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> but uh, this is our dance, isn't it? Shall we risk it? Why, uh, I think you I... You always rescue Austin, Claire. He's held up over there. All right, Claire. Come on, John. Let me thank you only the old Caesar police. I think we can trust them. <laughs> oh. Well, that's a little bit of fun, isn't it? Oh, John, that's the most wonderful party the club's ever held. Hmm? Oh, oh, sure. I can hardly wait for the unmasking at midnight. Oh, it'll be such fun. Unmasking? At midnight? Yes. First the award. But and... it's... It's 11.30 already. Oh, well, then it won't be long now. Oh, there's Austin and Claire, and they're motioning to us. I wonder what's wrong. Excuse me, will you? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. John. John, there was trouble at headquarters. Chief Sims just got a call. The police. What about the police? John, you knew this, didn't you? That's what you meant. Let's get out of here. We've got to talk. <laughs> Claire took me outside and down a path that led to the end of the garden where the lights from the ballroom danced sweetly on the quiet water of the fish pond. We were alone. Claire looked at me for a long moment and then... What are we going to do now? Claire, before you say anything more, please. Please answer my question. Do you love me? John. John, how can you even ask that? You know I do, darling. Say it. Say it, Claire. I want to hear it. John, I... I love you, John. I love you. I've always loved you. Okay. Okay, Claire, okay. Come on now, come on. Get hold of yourself. What are we going to do? He's out. 
Joseph's come back. He's found you. Don't worry about him, Claire. He'll go away. I promise you that. No, he won't. He wants to get us, John. Why else would he come here at all? He knows he was framed, and he must realize that we did it to get rid of him so we could be together. I couldn't bear it, what Claire was saying. And the meaning of her words jammed into my brain. I felt a terrible pressure swelling up inside me. Maybe we should tell the police that he's your brother. He'll be waiting for us at home, I know he will. He's a killer. She was talking He'll again as I reached out he and seized the mask he wore. Not. She stopped short when I ripped it from her face. Her eyes grew wide as I moved toward her, and her mouth fell open. I was afraid she might scream, so I clapped her hand over her mouth. I bent her head back. And I pulled the little dagger she wore from its scabbard and drove its point deep into her throat. I bent her back. Knees her slowly down. Until I felt the cold water in the pond in my arms. And I let her drop. She stared up at the sky as the ripples over her face grew dark from her blood. Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of Death Wears a Mask. Now, a word from George Putnam. Thousands of people who suffer the social and business handicap of dandruff are discovering that the way to combat it effectively is with double dandrine. Outstanding authorities explain that the most common kind of dandruff is caused by a germ called Pityros Palmo Valley. Now, when you wash or brush away loose dandruff, that doesn't destroy the germ. If you want real relief, the germ must be destroyed. And double dandrine does just that. It kills this germ on contact. Even in many stubborn cases, results with double dandrine have been amazing. Now, a special ingredient is the reason for double dandrine's astonishing effectiveness. An active antiseptic so remarkably efficient, many hospitals use it. In double dandrine, we call it Alzan. So try double dandrine and see if you don't agree that it really works, that it really does more than many dandruff-fighting methods, methods that actually are no better than plain water. Get double dandrine tomorrow. It carries a money-back guarantee. Claire lay dead, her blood darkening the pool. I had to get out of here. Now, I have the keys to John's car. I could make it if I could leave without being seen. I leaped up to the wall, clambered up on top of it, and swung my legs over. I was about to jump when... Hey! You're up on the wall! Where do you think you're going? I... I... What's the matter, officer? Better stay inside there, mister. There's an escaped convict loose in the neighborhood. Wouldn't be safe to go through these trees now. Oh, I... Uh, I'm not leaving. It's just a gag, officer. You know, Humpty Dumpty on the wall. There he is. John, what on earth are you doing up there? Well... What does Humpty Dumpty usually do on a wall? He <laughs> oh. falls off. Come on, John, you're missing all the fun. Hey, there's Claire. Claire? Oh, didn't you see her? She just went up that path. I jumped down off the wall and led them away from the terrible thing in the fish pond. I left them near the ballroom and said I was going to find Claire. I started out a side entrance, but ducked back when I saw a cop standing there, too. I cut across the dance floor, pushing my way through the people that milled around the edges. I was about halfway across when... Get around, everybody! Get around! A rush of people swarmed toward the stage. I tried to get by, but I was swept up with them as they pushed in close. Yes, this is by far the most successful party ever sponsored by the Oak Ridge Terrace Country Club. I had to get out. I had to. I began to shoulder through the mob, forcing my way between the tightly packed bodies. Yes, don't let that man take. People began shoving me back toward the stage. They were all laughing and shouting. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce that the judges were unanimous in their selection of the masquerader who played best the part portrayed by his costume. As the best clown of the evening, the grand prize goes to... Humpty Dumpty! The announcer stepped down and handed me a huge silver cup. I still thought I could clown my way out. I bowed foolishly and then... It's midnight. He's free. 
first. Take his mask off. Let's no. see the chest. We know it's you, John Nathan. Come on, open that. No, 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 John. I dropped the cup and plunged headlong into the milling, laughing ring that pressed in on me. I struggled to break through them as they shrieked and sang and clawed at my costume. Take his mask off. No, you, John. No, no, take it off. I've got him. Hold him. I fell down and their voices closed over me. They didn't know what they were doing. They were laughing and shouting. I felt the shell of my headpiece crack and they ripped it off. Then hands were helping me to my feet. And a deadly silence suddenly swept out through the crowd in an ever-increasing circle with me as the center. That's not John Mason. And at my feet, twisted and grotesque and grinning, lay the Humpty Dumpty mask. Not like this somber hood they were holding in front of me now. A black mask with no eyes. Joseph Talbot, before you are executed, in accordance with the laws of this state and the sentence pronounced, have you anything to say? I couldn't think. And the man holding the mask walked toward me. He slipped it over my head and tied it on. Then they adjusted the rope around my neck. And in the blackness of the black hood and the expectant hush beyond, my mind screamed for something to hang on to. Words, any words, speak them. Humpty Dumpty, set on a wall. Humpty Dumpty, had a great... This is Jeffrey Barnes again, bringing down the final curtain on tonight's mystery theater presentation of Death Wears a Mask. Be with us next week to hear a story written by Ray Darby entitled Death Goes Shopping. The original music for the mystery theater is composed and conducted by Alexander Sendler. Billy Quinn was starred and Mitzi Gould and Gregory Morton featured in tonight's play. Any resemblance between the names and characters used on mystery theater and any actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Right.